I also see I also see the image on the uh, NASA viewer and the uh, time is incrementing and the frames are incrementing. Okay, copy all.
Station Houston on two for com config. Go ahead. I just want to let you know that we are in the process of setting up a VHF relay on Space to Ground 2. So if you need us, just give us a call on Space to Ground 3. Okay, copy. About how long would that period of time be? Checking. So we will be configured here shortly, and then I will be in this config until up through docking. Okay, so from now till docking, space to ground three. A firm, and that'll be around 1800 GMT, actually. Okay, copy.
сеанса связи, средства связи не отключайте, можно будет вести связь с экипажем МКС и ЦУПом Москвы через СБАНД. Принято, да. Ну, для справки, следующий сеанс связи у 17.20 начало УКВ. Ну, как я уже сказал, вот будем работать через СБАНД. Работаем через СБАНД. отлично, хорошо. Принято, Иркуты.
Стоп, мастер, тут один дальность, 81, дальность, 89, Привет, Иркуты. Куча по Москвы. Аркут один на связи. Аркут один на связи. Очень плохо вас принимаю. Слышим, плохо вас принимаю. Стоп, Москва, Иркут-1, Далец, 8, Москва, Иркут-1, Далец, 2, Стоп, Москва, Иркут-1, готовы включить Стоп, Москва, Иркут-1, готовы включить на духу ду. Не понял. Включаем на духу ду. Включаем на духу ду. Завтра не ожидаем второй импульс, а духу ду. Не ожидаем второй импульс, а духу ду включен.
будет другое. Так, Москвы, Иркут-1, 16, Ленин-46, и если во всем на лицо, наблюдаю станцию в центре экрана. Принято, Иркут, и спасибо. Один дальний за скорость 59. Принято. Принято Иркуты. Куда-то по Москве. А, у нас есть рекомендация. Можете где на каком-нибудь рабочем месте зажать клавишу передача? Москва Иркут один зажали клавишу передача. Принято Иркут, спасибо. Далее, штат 3, скорость 57. Принято. Москва Иркут-1, дальность 59, скорость 56. Принято.
Terminale 7, Curăști 7. Bine, te urcute. Пошёл Сверхут один, дальность 47, скорость 51. Принято дальность 47, скорость 51. Массу РПК-1, дальность 45, скорость 50. Принято, Иркуты. Мы сейчас картинку не получаем, поэтому спасибо за доклад. А, повторите, вы получаете картинку сейчас? Нет, мы не получаем картинку, поэтому спасибо вам за доклад. А, не получаете. Все, хорошо. Понял. Сейчас масса РПТ-1, дальность 42,5, скорость 49. И не там?
Сейчас Москва, вот один, далее 39, скорость 47. Принято. Дальность 37, скорость 45. Принято. Москва Иркут-1, дальность 34, скорость 43. Принято. Вот один дали тридцать два корой сорок один. Приняли вас. Максимум вот один, дальность 30, скорость 40. Принято. Массовый путь один, дальность 28, скорость 38. Принятый рекут один.
Tot mai scurecută în el, dar doar 6, scură 3, 6. Rizetam? Вот один, далее, 24, скорость 34. Ты не там? Включайте дисплей плюс ТВ. Так, Москва Рукут-1 включил дисплей плюс ТВ, 16, 21, 28. Угол какой там? Принято. Ну да, угол узкий. Не нужно значит. Да, угол узкий. Это паспорт Иркут-1, да. Нет, это узкий угол. Половина, скорость 28. Принято. Дальность 18, скорость 27. Ты не там? Иркуты, информируем вас, что вот в 16.30 приблизительно на 8 минут возможны перерывы в S-Band. 16.30 на 8 минут возможно перерыва. Да, 
Moscow current range is 10.9 and range rate is 16.5. Copy.
Moscow, in Moscow current range is 10 and range rate is 15. Приняли. Copy. That was my reminder for condensate. Should I pop condensate? That was my reminder for condensation, should I pump it? Moscow, the range is 9 and the range rate is 13, 1, 3, copy. Three, two hours have passed after the pumping. So I think we're okay. I think we are okay, yes. It is great. And good morning once again from Mission Control Houston and welcome to our continuing coverage of the Soyuz MS-16's trip to the International Space Station. Three crew members are on board and closing the gap between themselves and the International Space Station, everything proceeding smoothly for an on-time docking today. Those three crew members from left to right, NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy making his third flight into space today. In the middle, the Soyuz commander and Russian cosmonaut Anatoly Ivanishin also on his third visit. And then on the very right there is Ivan Wagner making his first flight, another Russian cosmonaut on board. As of this very moment, they are just about eight kilometers away from the International Space Station as both vehicles are flying over the South Pacific to the southeast of Australia. And right now they are about 273 statute miles in altitude. Soyuz, already inside of eight kilometers away from the station, it's closing the gap between itself and the orbiting laboratory at a rate of about 11 meters per second. Everything has gone smoothly so far with uh, all of our uh, different burns, our delta velocity burns, four of those done to successfully raise the station's orbit following a successful launch earlier today. Uh, all the impulse burns fine-tuning the path towards the station, also going according to plan. So that's our ground track. Uh, right now they are in an orbital nighttime, but as you can see, as they continue to cross over the Pacific, we'll be getting into the orbital daytime, and we should get some good views uh, of the Soyuz during docking. We're coming to you live now from another flight control room. If you watch launch, you might be noticing a change of scenery. We're now back down the hall in the International Space Station's usual flight control room, known as Ficker 1, flight control room 1. Again, this just part of some of the precautions we're taking here in Houston in mission control uh, in the current COVID-19 environment. The different flight control teams are uh, alternating rooms between uh, what's known as handover, so minimizing uh, any person-to-person -person contact, maintaining social distancing, and maintaining a healthy flight control team to continue flying this orbiting laboratory as they're doing that 24 hours a day. Inside the room right now, the Orbit 2 team is led by Flight Director Pooja Jezrani. She's there at the bottom of your screen. Just above her, NASA astronaut Jessica Watkins serving as the Capcom this morning. She's the voice between all the teams here in Houston and the crew on board the International Space Station. A couple of other key players in the room right now. Uh, one of them is the visiting vehicle officer, Tom Erkenswick. He's overseeing a team both here in Houston and in Moscow that has direct insight into the Soyuz systems and how it's been performing and feeding that to the flight director and the entire control team here in Houston. Uh, Pooja has just finished polling the team, and they are go for this docking operation. There's a number of 
uh, items that have to get done, a number of configurations that have to get done with the International Space Station before we do a docking. Uh, everything from uh, the Spartan flight controller today, uh, configuring the solar arrays to make sure that they're not going to be moving around as they get into a docking attitude. That work being done by Will O'Connell over there at the Spartan position. Uh, and then things like uh, the attitude control, so which way the station is actually pointing uh, our ADCO today. James Real working to hand over that control from uh, the usual U.S. control using large gyroscopes uh, in the station structure over to the Russian segment, which can actually use its thrusters to help maintain attitude for the International Space Station. So at this point, all of that work is done. One of the last items we were waiting on was to acquire TV signal from the Soyuz spacecraft itself, and we are starting to get that down now. Uh, we'll be able to bring you that view uh, mixed in with this one with uh, the International or the Mission Control Moscow out in Koryov. They've been overseeing the mission ever since that successful launch uh, earlier this morning. Um, that was controlled initially from a blockhouse in Baikonur and handed over following that successful separation um, over down to Koryov. That launch was done successfully today. It was done right on time at 3.05 a.m. Central, 4.05 a.m. Eastern, 8.05 GMT. I'm going to try and throw in GMT as much as possible. Have been seen. We've got a lot of our international friends watching today, so I'll try and I'll throw that in when possible so you can help track all of our milestones also. Uh, but again, that launch came right on time. Uh, and that was the uh, roughly nine minute ride into orbit on the Soyuz spacecraft. Again, this was the first flight of humans on the Soyuz 2.1A booster. This is uh, an upgraded variant of the Soyuz with uh, additional um, telemetry. Uh, so essentially data coming back from the vehicle, uh, some upgrades to the launch escape system, uh, which was used recently uh, back in 2008, 2018 uh, during the flight of Nick Haig and uh, Alexei Ovchinin. Um, this was the first time launching on that booster and also launching from Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. It was a flawless ride uphill, the first stage, those four strap-on boosters firing for about the first two minutes uh, before following, falling away in the core stage, continuing the climb into orbit. Again, this is the third time uh, into space for both uh, Cassidy and Evanetian. For Cassidy, this is his second ride on the Soyuz spacecraft. His first ever flight was on Space Shuttle Endeavour on STS-127, also a mission to the International Space Station, uh, but this time getting his third trip into space. Again, it was a flawless flight uh, into orbit for the Soyuz spacecraft, or for the Soyuz rocket. We got some occasional cabin views inside this, looking at uh, Anatoly Ivanishin on the bottom of your screen. He's the Soyuz commander for all the operations today. In the top there, Ivan Wagner, who making his first flight into space. And this, just another view that we were able to get. This is a camera right on the side of the Soyuz spacecraft. You were able to see that third stage separate and fly away. And then shortly after one of the solar arrays, there are two of these on the Soyuz spacecraft that provide electrical power, deploying uh, to begin gathering the sun's energy and supplying electricity to systems on board the spacecraft. That automated deployment also happen happening with a deployment of a number of different antennas used for navigation and also the automated rendezvous coming up that we're going to see in just about under 40 minutes from now. So with the go from the team here in Houston, and we are right now about 38 minutes away from the expected docking time. I say expected because it's not unusual for the Soyuz to get there a little bit early. Uh, it is an automated rendezvous, so everything being flown by the Corps' automated rendezvous system on the Soyuz spacecraft. They were able to do checkouts of the active system on the Soyuz and the passive system on the Russian service module, also known as Vezda, uh, during the, fly, or the flight up to our current altitude. One of the major milestones we're going to be tracking now is the fly around. So right now the Soyuz is coming in pretty much right underneath the International Space Station. Uh, it's eventually going to get close to what's known as the R-bar, the radial vector. 
and then begin to swing its way up to its docking port, uh, which is the Poisk module. You're looking at a model of the International Space Station. The Poisk module is that empty one just above Progress 74, where you see the MS-16 spacecraft is scheduled to dock. That's on the space-facing side, or the zenith side, of the Zvezda service module. And again, we're tracking that docking to take place uh, on time at about 9.16 a.m. Central Time, 10.16 a.m. Eastern, or 14.16 GMT. And again, not unusual for the Soyuz to move through a couple of these steps a little bit quicker than normal. Uh, after they do the fly around, they'll initiate uh, something known as station keeping. That's where they do their kind of final alignment checks for the vehicle when they're only about 190 meters away. Then they'll be able to execute that final approach, begin driving in slowly towards uh, the hatch or the docking port on the Poisk module, also known as Mini Research Module 2. That final approach rate will slow all the way down to about a tenth of a meter per second, so it'll be a slow and steady crawl into that final docking port. Uh, but it's a uh, slow and steady crawl. It's uh, when you're bringing two spacecraft together. Slow and steady always wins the race. Uh, but everything performing great with the vehicle so far, all of its checkouts done successfully, and all the navigation and that automated rendezvous control. So we'll start to listen in now as we continue to hear calls between Anatoly Venetian, the Soyuz commander, and the flight controllers over in Koryov as the Soyuz spacecraft begins its approach. Да, значит, три, скорость восемь один. The range is three, and the rate is eight point one meters per second. Copy. Ожидаем третий импульс сближения. We are standing by for the third approach burn. We are standing by as well. Uh, the range is 2.7 and the rate is 8. Copy. The range is 2.5 and the rate is 8. We can see the maneuver. The station has moved to the right, uh, practically at 90, 90 degrees. Copy, Irkuti. Maneuver is confirmed as well. We can see it as well. Getting a live view of sunrise is the station 271 statute miles over the South Pacific about to cross the Terminator, that line between night and day on the Earth's surface. The Soyuz spacecraft coming up on two kilometers away and closing, right now at about seven and a half meters per second. We have a combined GSO in attitude at 1642.11, SKD activated at 1642.17, 1.5 meters, 2 meters, 3 uh, parameters of schedule are nominal, 4, uh, we have uh, observed the SKD deactivation. And the oxygen supply. Uh, so the burn delta V is five zero six five point zero six meters per second. Copy. Wow. 
Do we are not receiving the image right now. Could you please provide the running commentary? The range is 1.6, the rate is 4. Copy. So you're continuing to get those good call outs from Anatoly Venetian. He's giving the range and the range rate. So they're about 1.6 kilometers away from station, closing in at about 4 meters per second right now. That range rate is going to continue to drop. We'll eventually hit zero after we do the fly around and hit station keeping. And then the Soyuz will begin its final approach, coming in at a rate of about a tenth of a meter per second. The Soyuz is right now executing a couple of final burns known as impulse burns. These are quick firings of the engines just to continue fine tuning that path. Okay. To just get a confirmation from the visiting vehicle officer that the impulse 4 burn was done successfully. The impulse 5 burn. The range is 1.2, of the rate is 3.8. And getting our first look now, this view from the Soyuz looking up at the station as it starts to catch a little bit more sunlight, that'll firmly come into view. Uh, the numbers to really pay attention to uh, down in the bottom left corner, that top one you can see 1.099 kilometers, that's the range away from the station. Just beneath that, the meters per second, that's the closure rate. So right now we're closing at about 3.5 meters per second. The range is one kilometer, and the rate 3.4. Uh, the power activation is confirmed, and uh, the braking is in progress. Copy. So the range is 900 meters and the rate is 2.5 meters per second. Copy. The range is 840. Eight Four zero and the rate is two point three. Copy. The range is eight hundred. The rate is two point two. The braking is complete. Uh, Vanya, could you please use AGC mode? Stand by. The range is 750 and the rate is 2.2. So inside 750 meters, and another good confirmation impulse 5 burn has been done successfully. 4806, uh, I am sending AGC command. Uh, do you want me to do it again? Uh, yes, let's do it again. And again? Well, maybe one more. Now, let's leave it like that. So the range is 660, and the rate is 2.2. Copy. 
And there we have a great view of the Soyuz MS-16 continuing right. its approach to the station. Yeah, us, uh, this is a camera looking from the bottom right. down back towards planet Earth. Uh, Soyuz going to continue to approach at this angle and eventually execute a fly-around maneuver once it gets about 400 meters away from the station. Yes, let's leave it like that, Ivan. The range is 600, the rate is 1.4. Copy. We are standing by for the close distance approach. Uh, and we are standing by for proximity ops. And the visiting vehicle officer here in Houston confirming impulse six is done. That's the sixth and final impulse burn, just fine tuning and beginning to break in the Soyuz approach to the station. Next milestone is going to be that fly around once it gets to about 400 meters away. So the range is 520, the rate is 1.4 just 120 meters to go and then they'll start executing that fly around that'll essentially be about a half loop from the bottom of the station all the way up to the top side where it'll so use will eventually orient itself uh, with the docking probe pointing back down towards earth as it moves in on the uh, space facing side docking port uh, known as poisk or the mini research module 2. The range is 460, the rate is 1.3, copy. The range is 420 and the rate is 1.2. Copy. And again, we're coming up on that 400 meter point, and then right after that, we should hear the beginning of fly around. The range is 400 and the rate is 1.1. Fly around is confirmed. Copy, fly around. And confirmation, the fly around has begun. Yes, so we're going to see the Soyuz uh, spacecraft flying. begin to swing its way from the bottom over top of the International Space Station. The range is from 370, the rate is 1.1. Copy. The range is 350 and the rate is 0 0.8. The range is 330, and the rate is 0 0 0.9. The range is 310, the rate is 0 0.75. Copy. The range is 300, uh, the rate is 0 0.75. Thank you. 
280 meters, poise 63. The range is 280 meters and the rate is uh, 0 0.63. Copy. You're just now tuning in. You are looking at the Soyuz MS-16 spacecraft. Three crew members on board, NASA's Chris Cassidy and of course, Cosmos Cosmos, Anatoly Ivanishin and Yvonne Wagner. They're in what's known as the fly around right now. They closed in to 400 meters away from the station. They're still getting a little bit closer, but primarily uh, this maneuver is done to bring the Soyuz from the bottom of the station up to the top. It's all in the name, it's the fly around. That'll eventually line it up with its docking port known as the Poisk module. And once it finishes this fly around, we'll enter into a period of what's known as station keeping. That gives a chance for the automated system on board the Soyuz to finish fine tuning that alignment before they begin the final approach. 250 meters is the range and 0 0.5 is the rate. Copy. The range is 240 meters, and uh, the rate is 0 0.4. The range is 235 meters, and the rate is 0 0.36. Copy. The range is 230 meters and the rate is 0 220 meters is the range, and the rate is 0 0.2. Copy. This camera from the very forward end of the Soyuz keeping the station right in the middle of its crosshairs, and this actually giving us a really good view of its eventual docking port. If you look just above uh, the, the middle of the crosshairs on that center line, it's perfectly splitting the Russian segment of the station right now to the left is the piers docking compartment with the 74 Progress vehicle currently docked. And just to the right is that empty poised docking port. That's pointing back into space. It's on the zenith side of the Zvezda service module. And that is where this Soyuz is bound. So it's going to continue this pirouette around the station until it has that poised right in its crosshair. We'll be in the station keeping so it can fine tune its alignment. And then we'll begin the final approach. Two hundred and ten meters is the range, and the rate is zero point one. Copy. Uh, the range is two uh, two hundred and nine meters, and the rate is zero point one. The closing range is 208 meters, and the rate is 0 0.7. The range is 206 meters, and the rate is 0 
Kati. The range is 204 meters and the rate is 0 0.04. So at this point, the Soyuz has changed its angle of attack to the station by about 60 degrees. This entire maneuver is going to change it about 123 degrees, so not a full 180 from one side to the other as it did approach the station at a bit of an oblique angle. Uh, but by the time it's done with this fly around, it will be right over top of that poised module looking straight back down. Seeing a couple of thruster firings as it continues to fine tune in this fly around maneuver. Right now, maintaining a distance of about 200 meters as it begins this uh, roughly half circle uh, over top of the station. Right now, both vehicles flying over the northern part of South America, right over Colombia, about to cross over the border between Colombia and Venezuela, and then eventually moving out over the Caribbean. Again, this entire operation right now being done automatically. An automated rendezvous system on the Soyuz, the cores, communicating with antennas back on the station itself. Range raise 0 0.1. Can you Copy. Thanks to plenty of sunlight, getting a lot of views there. The thruster firings as the Soyuz continues to fine tune. Range is 200 meters. Uh, range rate is zero decimal zero eight. Copy. Uh, and uh, uh, approach flag is confirmed. For course, 200 meters is the range. Uh, range rate is zero point zero two. Иркута, АК-15 сейчас у вас горит. Еще раз. К-15 сейчас горит. Да, пришел к 15 только что загорелся, вышел на улицу, такой на угла. Принято, принято. Иркуты, давайте сворачиваем экран и выдаем с формата сближения команду кричал. Выдаем с формата сближения команду кричал примерно. 17.02.32. Выдал команду кричал. Есть причал, причал. Принято. И также действие по 63-й странице внизу. Подсветка войска и фара. Включаю фару, да. Принято, хорошо. 17.02.55. Включил фару. Принято. Скорость 83. Принято. Продолжается режим автоматического подчеркнения. Скорость 
Федеральный 153, скорость 085. Принято. Принято. Да, на шестьдесят скорость двадцать семь. Ожидаем метки 47 метров, включение СКП. Ожидаем. Есть включение СКП. Есть питание, штанга вынута. Защелки вынута, ключи открыты, переход на люк закрыт. Есть готовность СКП. Принято.
Ale srdce skoro se moc. Принято базар. Визуально 15. Скорость на радио. Принято. Принято. Thank you. 
Якуты можете на Инпу-2 выбрать формат ССВП? Повторите. На Инпу-2 формат ССВП можете выбрать? But with that, Chris Cassidy, Anatoly Ivanishin, and Ivan Wagner's voyage to the International Space Station is complete. They've arrived. This is the Hooks engaged time. 171321. 171321. Well, probe extension. Inaudible. Uh, LED is not illuminated on the input control panel. Okay. Uh, yes, it's not illuminated. Okay, there were parameters. Uh, let's check that. Uh, 118 and 228. Uh, these are the readings for spherical tanks, 1 and 2, which are nominal. 4, uh, 7, 6. This is the current propellant uh, reading. Uh, copy all. We have... Um, Note down uh, all your reports. Uh, please uh, switch to page 67. Copy all. Page 67. Send an R7 command to deactivate the headlight. Uh, and I will close uh, RPV-1 airflow regulator 1. Uh, it is now closed. MK uh, command is ready. Yes, uh, let's deactivate the headlight. And please turn on the R. And so with the Soyuz spacecraft now docked to the International Space Station at the at the moment of that docking, uh, the station goes into what's known as free drift, so uh, not under any active attitude control, and that way you're not going to accidentally impart loads uh, into the Soyuz or the docking port um, if the station starts to maneuver. The Soyuz hooks will close first. That takes a couple of minutes following docking, and then following that, the hooks on the Mini Research Module 2 or the Poisk Module will then close, and then the uh, space station will once again resume attitude control, uh, that being done right now on the Russian segment using the thrusters on the service module. The uh, pressure gauge. So what's the pressure reading? Okay, let's... But again, just in case you missed it, the docking did occur at 9.13 a.m. Central Time, 10.13 a.m. Eastern, 14.13 GMT, with the station and the Soyuz flying 260 statute miles over the northern Atlantic. When you're ready, we'll be ready to copy all the measurements in Table 9-1. Moscow, we copied your last. Moscow, this is Irkut 2, 171740. A sub pressure is 847, bellow pressure 826, uh, and uh, assembly compartment pressure is 832. Um, and we cannot measure such uh, pressure using MV pressure gauge. That's too high for that. Okay, copy. And uh, the LED for electrical connectors is illuminated. Uh, hooks open is not illuminated. Uh, Send them by for uh, hooks closed, uh, LED.
Irkutu, we have a recommendation for you. Please send G4 command at 17.20. Come again. What is the time? 17.20. Please send G4 command at that time. Okay, copy. Uh, we're going to uh, send G4 command at 17.20. And the uh, uh, hooks are closed now. Copy. And what did you say about and the pressure gauge? Its uh, measurement range does not allow us to use it to measure SI descent module pressure. And we heard the call, and we just got confirmation here in Houston that the hooks on the Soyuz side have been closed. Now standing by for the hooks on the Poise side, so on the station side to close. And then we'll have what's known as hard dock, or really just a, a firm mate of the Soyuz spacecraft to the station. And looking like those hooks are now driving. Well, uh, you're going to use uh, uh, any uh, control panel. Okay. So once those hooks are done driving, they'll be able to re-enable the attitude control on the space station. It's able to stay in free drift um, for quite a while before it would begin to drift out of its attitude. Then after that, we'll enter into the what's known as the post-docking procedures. The crew will kick off a series of leak checks uh, on the Soyuz modules and then between the hatches of the Soyuz and the station itself. This will also be the opportunity for uh, Cassidy, Evanetian, and Wagner to get out of their Sokol engine entry suits that they've been wearing uh, since several hours prior to launch. And it typically takes about two hours uh, following the docking for the hatches to be open. Right now we are tracking the hatch open uh, to take place at about 11.15 a.m. Central, 12.15 p.m. Eastern. 1615 GMT. This is Irkut 1. And the latches are retracted at 1721. Copy. Uh, Moscow at 17.21.50, uh, probe is retracted and SSVP mode has been executed. Copy all. Uh, we will deactivate SSVP mode. Copy. Uh, I'm sending the 8 command to deactivate SSVP dock and an internal transfer uh, system at 17.21. 22. And we just got confirmation that the hooks have now closed on the MRM2, the poise module. 